Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting up the obliterators from the Wrath of the Soul Forge King box set. This took me a while because these models really bored me. <laughs> well anyway, I assembled them up to the point where they got in the way of painting. One of them has their arms attached because his arms are spread out so it's fine. The other one has his arms separate because he's like closed in so it would get in the way of painting. And I primed them with a car primer. Car primer can be used throughout the year. I use black because that's the one I have access to. I prefer gray. It's easier to work with in the end. And yes, and showing are all the colors I use throughout this. Ones that I showcase and ones that I don't showcase. All right, with Eshin Gray, Pallid Witch Flesh, and White Scar White, we're going to start with the pre-coating. I'm going to use an airbrush uh, to do the first two parts. So Eshin Gray is going to go all over, create the shadows, and then Pallid Witch Flesh from up above to create the light and shadows. And then White Scar White, we're going to dry brush on, not the whole model needs it, but specifically the skin to help outline highs and lows. The tubes that he has going throughout all his body to really highlight them and make them easy to see. And yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. We don't really need to uh, dry brush anything else. If it gets hit, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Alright, with Kisla Flesh, Emperor's Children, and Lamian Medium, we're going to start with the skin. Because usually I go for the largest part of the model, and this is the largest part that's inside a lot of the other details. So we're going to make a wash of Kisla Flesh with Lamian Medium. I'm going to add Lamian Medium until it creates a somewhat see-through wash. Apply this all over. Then do the same thing with Emperor's Children. And uh, that's pretty much it for the first layer. Alright, with Magos Purple and a little bit of Lamian Medium to make it flow better, I then apply this all over the flesh. This will create all the shadows and depth in there. And then with Kislev Flesh, with a little bit of water down, we're going to apply this a lot throughout the skin. On the edges, open flat planes and stuff. We're going to try to keep the recesses and the areas around the recesses fine. Well, we're going to paint a bunch of straight lines, flat lines, and cover up and fill in a lot of the bling parts of the skin. And then with Pallid Witch Flesh, Kisla Flesh, and a little bit of Blomian Medium to help it flow a bit better, we do a light mix of this, and then we apply this on the most raised areas, edges, and flat planes. Now, on his like biceps and stuff, I paint a bunch of straight lines all throughout his biceps and stuff to sort of do a little bit of a transition of color, and this is just a highlight phase. I go back to Magos Purple and Lamian Medium and then I just apply this in select areas where I want direct shadow or darker to be. This is more of an artsy thing, like in his inner thighs, between his toes, and some other places where I would want there to be more shadow or dark. Alright, with Dawnstone and Ulthuan Grey, he has a bunch of, t well they have a bunch of teeth and toenails all throughout. So basically I do a base layer of Dawnstone all throughout, and then with Ulthuan Grey I paint straight lines along the top, bottom, right, left of each horn, and then in between those lines, and then it creates like a bright tip at the end and stripes going back. Uh, this is visible on some of them, because they're larger, but on some it just doesn't show that well. Alright, with Black Templar Contrast Paint mixed with Lamy Medium to dilute it, we apply this all over the hoses that are scattered throughout the body on his flesh and stuff, and the pre-coating we did will already have the highlighting ready for us. And with Abaddon Black, there's a bunch of these just solid cables that are scattered and hidden throughout his flesh. And 
And with Abaddon black and Euro yellow, I just do this yellow hazard stripe that's on one of his hoses. I already painted the whole thing yellow, and then I just do black stripes on for the both sides. Now with Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Wild Rider Red, we paint uh, these little fiery thingies that are on his hose. I don't know what these are. Fill in with Corn Red, the little glass window, then fill that in with Evil Sun Scarlet, like 90% of all that we painted, and then Wild Rider Red on the top half or third. Alright, with Abaddon Black, Corvus Black, Dark Reaper, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint his black armor. So we're going to paint all his the plates with Abaddon Black as a base. Then we're going to cover pretty much 90%, 90-95% of all the plates with Corvus Black, which is an off-black, slightly grayer. Then we're going to take a 1 to 1-ish mix of Corvus Black and Dark Reaper, and then we're going to add just a little bit of Lamine Medium to help it flow better. And then we're going to cover like 60-70% eh, of each armor plate uh, facing towards uh, the light or up. And yeah. Alright, I'm going to try this because it's on the box and so I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. So with Hoeth Blue, I'm going to paint thin lines all along the black as the edging. So here's basically what happens. Uh, like for the armor plate I show, I paint all the edges of the black and then I paint thin lines throughout these like pre-made folds or ru ruffles in this armor plate. Yeah. So basically outline the edges and then paint straight lines uh, through a few places and also on the edges depending on what part it is you're doing. This took a while and it's okay if the edges are a little uh, big or large because in a lot of cases uh, they're going to be covered with metals or stuff nearby so the blue in some places is just going to disappear. Alright, with Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, I'm going to paint, uh, one of them has a cloak robe thingy. Uh, so, this actually turned out very well. So, start off with a base layer of Corn Red, then I did a one-to-one -one mix of Corn Red and Evil Sun Scarlet and covered 95% of the whole cloak in it. Only the darkest areas or recesses had still Corn Red. Then used po uh, pure Evil Sun Scarlet, covered like 80-90% to 90 of what I just painted. Then I do a one-to-one -one mix of Evil Suns and Troll Slayer, and paint, uh, probably like... 10, 15, maybe 20% of the uh, cloak, the edges, the folds, the more raised areas and stuff. And then with pure Troll Slayer Orange, very thin lines on the exact folds, the most raised areas and stuff to be points where like the light hits or focal points. Alright, with Carrick Stone, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Ushtabi Bone, I'm going to paint the one skull that is on one of the guys. I haven't painted a skull in a while or shown how to do it in a while because it was very obvious or very time consuming or a bunch of other reasons. But here's basically what I do. Take Carrick Stone, base layer, cover it in Skeleton Horde Contrast. Then with Carrick Stone, cover 90% of all that I did before. And then with Ushtabi Bone, paint the uh, hard edges, teeth straight lines along the sides of the skull and stuff like that and it's done. Just a simple easy skull. With AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish I then apply this all over the model and everything I've painted. I'm somewhat done with all the non-metals. Uh, this model has a lot of interlacing detail so I'll go back and forth between the two but I'm doing this now because the majority of the non-metallics are done.
Alright, with Rune Lord Brass, Null Noil, and I show it a little bit later, but Iron Warriors, which is the darkest metal I have, sadly, I then do all the metal trimmings. So, uh, with Rune Lord Brass, I do this and paint all the metal edge highlights that Chaos is infamous for having. Number one reason to not want to start a Chaos Army. And, uh, I then go and do with Iron Warriors, I do the same thing, there's a lot of flat metal plates and stuff like that uh, that I need to do, or the pistons and stuff, or the start of the pistons, and so I paint them with uh, Iron Warriors. Then once that's done, I apply Null Noil all over, so two coats essentially. On the m silver metal, or dark metal, I apply two layers of just flat Null Noil, and then on the Rune Lord Brass, I apply one layer all over, and then I apply sort of a dot of it on each bolt essentially and then spread it out a little so it doesn't it isn't so jarring and then once that is done I then go back with the Rune Lord brass and so I basically uh, just take it pure and I'm not really dry brushing but just a little bit on the edge of the brush and I just do tap tap taps all around along the edges to like edge highlight or refill sort of the middle between the dots and stuff to add some more shine back into the metal that's essentially what happens And now with Vallejo Duraluminum, which is just a very bright silver, uh, and a silver that works. The reason why I don't use GW stuff is it doesn't, except for the Vallejo Air. So essentially, uh, what happens is, I take this and then with a sort of dry brush, I'm not dry brushing, I'm over brushing on the flat plates of steel to create like some, some highlights, not really highlights, but like scratches on there and stuff. Add some color to it, edging it and adding some color between scratches. And then with the pure stuff, I then take a brush and then apply it to the pistons, the uh, part of the pistons that are open. You know it, if you've seen a hydraulic piston, the center or the inside part is always bright silver. Alright, with Vallejo Copper and some Griffhound Orange, I'm going to try to paint his, uh, which one? The, uh, Flamer Barrel. So basically I paint it all in copper, then wa heavily watered down Griffinhorn Orange to do the bottom half of it as this orange thing, then re-highlight all the edges and stuff with the copper. And, uh, works pretty well. Alright, with Dragonhoff Nightshade, Skeleton Horde Contrast, and Gullum and Flesh, I then paint the gun barrels. So, uh, like there's one, two, three gun barrels, the Flamer, Heavy Bolter, and then like Assault Cannon gun barrels. Uh, essentially, I start off with Dragonhoff Nightshade to give it a blue sheen, which looked pretty good on some. Uh, I didn't work too well on the Flamer because already the pre, the code I put before. Then I used Skeleton Horde Contrast, which kind of ruined it. A bit, and then Golem and Flesh. I think this Golem and Flesh is pretty much done. Like it can't work well without being administered some water or other stuff. So basically, I should have kept the Drakenhof blue, and then the Golem and Flesh just skip the skeleton or contrast, and it probably would have looked better. Maybe. Eh, oh well. I then assemble the models, and uh, yeah. And 
and done because I am done. <laughs> Uh, I did not want to paint these things like after I started like after a bit it's just like I will do anything else including dishes than paint these guys <laughs> and man the time pass uh, so it's just like uh, they're a bit frustrating because there's a lot of interlocking detail it's like the flesh interlocks with metal or the armor and then like back and forth so trying to do things in a step-by-step -step process is irritating I mean, we can understand why the heavy metal team, or at least they used to, once uh, said that they do like one part, one limb, or one small section com at a time to full completion, and then move on, and it begins to make sense with all the weird detail it is. But overall, there's some detail I guess I kind of missed, maybe, or didn't notice, or was just, I, well, mostly I was just done. I was, I'm done. These are good enough. They're done enough. I'm fine. Um, uh, the models... Okay, so they're they're cool models, but chaos is always so frustrating. There's always so much. The flesh I did really well. The black armor is pretty good. Uh, maybe some of the highlights are a little too big, too thick, too bright. But like, uh, it's it's hard to do, especially with some of these. The metals are the brass metal is fine. The dark metal is meh. It didn't adhere too well to the gun barrel things. Um, Maybe I should have like applied like a bright silver to the gun barrels and then so that the wearing or aging would have shown better. Um, the brass bullets, I uh, tried that. Uh, yeah, there are some details I didn't show because there's so much back and forth and so much things are just ridiculous. But I showed how to do the majority of the stuff and things like that. And the rest can be up to your interpretation. Their helmets, their heads, those were difficult to deal with because it's like... I'm painting the flesh and then the metal is behind it and so uh, these models are a little bit frustrating and irritating to paint there's a lot of detail there's a lot of room for you to go far in it um yeah and uh, overall I give myself a 7 out of 10 uh, there are some things that are done really well uh, but there are some things that just hold back or some things that did not really there like certain parts of it uh, the gun barrels the heavy bolter or the multi meltas on the right arm of one of them they, uh, they're not bad, but they're not as good as the things around them. And because of that, they make the rest of the model look bad, essentially. And I guess I kind of screwed up the bases. I was trying some stuff, didn't turn out well. Eh, ah eh, well. Um, yeah. Well, well, I am done with this box set. I'm moving on to some other things. I'm uh, scalper willing, I will get <laughs> this new Leviathan box set and we can go on to that and uh yeah uh we will see what happens then but until then um do some smaller models smaller project things or maybe even hit my pile of shame possibly all right well alrighty then so like the video if you like the video comment if you want to comment share if you want to share it and more to come whenever